We head north this week to the Highlands for the 13th event on the PGA Euro Pro Tour, the Spey Valley Championship, where our players will be battling not just the course, but the weather too. I'm joined by Rachel Drummond, but before we start the coverage, we've got to talk about the weather. It's absolutely dominated events here, hasn't it? I mean, you wouldn't think it now, but we had nine millimetres of rain call in really quick succession. And it did well to, for the greens to be all right. That's, that's a miracle. But, you know, if you've got too many preferred lies on the fairway and you can't actually drop the ball, then they have to stop play. OK, well, before we focus on the events, time to take a look at that order of merit. Well, it's all about being in the top five. James Allen leads the way. Northern Ireland's Dermot McElroy tucked into second. Brandon Robinson Thompson was so impressive at the Vale is in third. And then finally, Jack Davidson, the winner at McHunnis. Pressure from Sagu, Maddie, and Broadhurst, all of whom were in good form in Northern Ireland. The top five we know are all here in Scotland. They're not taking their chances, are they? Definitely not. They know how crucial this event is. A lot of them, if they have the win, then their they're top five challenge tour cards are secured. And for those just outside the top five, we've got Pavan Sagu, uh, we've got Maddie, and then Broadhurst, who was a winner last time out there. Um, how imperative was it then to be here as well? Well, Maddie, definitely, he missed out on the win. He's had a great first round here, so he's going to want to be knocking on that door. Um, they, know, they know what they've got to do, but they'll be just keeping their heads down and golfing the ball. Absolutely. Well, time to turn our attention to this course, the stunning Spey Valley, where earlier on in the year, John Morgan took a trip to Scotland to take a closer look. Do you know, this golf course, you know, kind of gives you a, a chance, a little kind of idea of like what kind of holes and how the course is going to play the first like three. You think, oh, I, do you know what, I'm going to get a couple of birdies here. You know, I'm going to get off to a hot start. Then Sway Valley starts to show you what it's all about. And it's really, really tough. Now the back nine, my goodness, is brutal. I mean, I've just been looking at the yardage. I mean, it's... What was it? My goodness, it's 3,684 coming back in. And, uh, you know, every par four is over 400 yards, par fives are monstrous, par threes are monstrous, and they're all demanding, they all require demanding great quality golf shots. It's its own golf course. I mean, this is why it's had so many pro events over the years, great winners down the line as well. We're very fortunate to be at this golf course again, and I tell you what, it's going to take some play, and a worthy winner comes up trumps here at Spey Valley. Thanks, John, and couldn't agree more. This is a wonderfully scenic location, but the 13th event of the Euro Pro Tour season has been decidedly unlucky with the weather. That said, north of the border, golfers are known for being hardy, and case in point was Michael Stewart, who set the clubhouse target. With rounds of 66, then 67, this former Scottish boys and Scottish amateur champion leads the way at nine under par. That means another consistent campaigner in recent weeks. Paul Maddy has come up just short. A back nine of 33 and a round of 70 wasn't quite good enough to retain hope of lifting the trophy. You see, that was it on a decidedly damp Thursday. Play was called, the tournament was reduced to 36 holes. So when the action resumed next morning, many still had the chance to catch or overtake Stewart at the top. Before play began though, a two-minute silence was observed, marking the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Somber moment indeed. On the 18th tee, having been left to play just one hole, Ben Hutchinson 
was acutely aware he required a birdie to match Stewart's total and kit. It's no easy task. It's not 420 yards, this closing hole. It's not one you'd really want to target for a birdie and a really interesting dynamic now in this, what is the final round, the second round, with all of the players out on the course and to tee off, knowing exactly what they need to do. And this man included Dermot McElroy, who's having a wonderful season, got his second Euro Pro Tour win. They'll have a chance to get to nine under par there. Let's go to 18 and Rachel. Ben's tee shot on 18 has found the right fairway. In terms of getting a good line into that flag, it is a great angle. The, uh, the rough is very wet, so he's going to have a little bit of interference club to ball, but he'll definitely bear that in mind. It's a great chance to get close to that pin, make birdie and get close to that leader. Hutchinson, he's worked in a clothes shop recently, he's worked in a supermarket, now he's shopping for a maiden Euro Pro Tour title. It's all about this. Already a runner-up this season at the CPG Classic. And he's going to have, what, about 20 feet to give himself a shot of going one better here. Bit of a mixed bag, five missed cuts for him as well in his 11 starts. Consistently good form for McElroy this season, though second in the order of merit. A good result here could pretty much wrap up his challenge tour card. Never really had a chance that one, though, Phil. It's a strange situation for him. Of course, he wants to lift the trophy, but he knows if he finishes in the top three, he's just about OK. As for Will Ennefer, I think it's been a, quite a subdued season. Yeah, finished heartbreakingly sixth on the order of merit, missing out on promotion by just one spot. Last year, after picking up a maiden tour win, I think many of us thought he'd really kick on and be a threat, but it's just not quite happened for him in 2022. On 18, watching this put with immense interest, Michael Stewart. Can Hutchinson equal that nine under total? Can afford to be aggressive with this one. And he wasn't, you just can't leave those putts short. It will be a tap-in for a par and a good finish, but it won't be a chance or a trophy. He won final qualifying for the Open Championship last year at St Anne's Old Links to play at Royal St George's, but he's not going to win here. Now, the next test for McElroy is the 16th. Kit, tell us about it. Such a tough par three coming late in the round, 230 yards. You've got bunkers guarding it short, and the green is quite shallow. Front left closer to you than back right, so pin position and clubbing all important here. Your margin for error is pretty small. Can McElroy find the putting surface? Give himself a decent look to get into a share of that lead. You can see the breeze is in the face as well, making it play even longer. Just a touch shy, but looks like the type of chip he might fancy. Ben Hutchinson, eight under, final round, yeah. one back from the leader. Yeah. Um, how did you find it out there? I mean, it was a long second round, <laughs> over 24 hours, but yeah, no, it was all right. Come back, play one hole today, but. I have to say, worst nightmare as a player is knowing you got one left. Yeah. I used to run. How, how did you cope with, um, with that? Well, I just knew I had to make a birdie to catch, obviously, Michael, but a par it is. And you had Ben Jones on the bag this week. Mm. How nice is it to yeah, have good. a fellow competitor He, he did well. <laughs> he did well. He can do it again if he wants. But he's not fired. <laughs> hopefully he's back playing next week. Now 17 and Ennefer. He can't win this, but a good finish. And then a good finish to the season. Three tournaments left, including the lucrative to a championship at Loch Earn, and who knows, he could be one better than last year and nick in and gain one of those promotion places. Yeah, he was pipped at the post last year, looking to do the reverse. And one of the men he's got to overtake is Pavan Segu, a winner this year. A long way back today, but a chance to pick up a birdie here on 18, a good angle from the right-hand rough. 
He has not the inspiration he showed at Abridge. Closing two rounds there, he shot 62-63 to prevail. He's sixth at the moment on the order of merit, looking at a slight demotion. Here is that chip for McElroy on the par three, 16th. Oh, has to run. God. Yeah, the contact just sounded a little clunky. And as you heard, he knew early he hadn't quite got it running with enough pace at the hole. Sagu for the closing birdie to finish one over par for 36 holes. Excellent finish. Been very impressed with what I've seen of him this season. And interestingly, that incredible run at Abridge came from a decision to actually play more conservatively. Just get the ball in play, give himself more fairways and greens. And the putter was hot. Enifer. I think the same thing applies for Sagu and Enifer there. One birdie somewhere could have massive significance when the final put is hold in Northern Ireland. Big putt for McElroy to stay at eight under par, one back with two to play. Yeah, well Very so calmly hold indeed up the hill. So then, Stewart just about clinging on to top spot alone, but the likes of McElroy and Irishman Stuart Graham have the opportunity to follow in the winning footsteps of Sam Broadhurst. The champion at Clandy Boy, impressively, last time out. Oh, it's obviously great. It's what everyone wants to do, you know. You play the tour, you want to win. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's felt good since winning. Now here we go, Broadhurst. This for the win. Little left to right. Go on. Yes. Sam is the man at Clandy Boy. Three birdies in the first seven holes today but gave a couple of those back and had to wait until now for another birdie. This one completes a 69 and makes Sam Broadhurst the Northern Ireland Masters champion 2022. Uh, I mean, I know Paul well, he, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's a grinder, he's always there, like, like you said. I was kind of staying in the moment, kind of focusing on what I've got to do, even when it got tight coming down the stretch, I was still, you know, I was aware of where I was, but I was still trying to hit the shots that I knew I needed to do, so I wasn't really, paying too much attention to what he was doing. Obviously, I knew I'd lost the lead, but I wasn't too worried about it because I still was in a tie for the lead. Uh, I was more annoyed that I just missed the putt, to be honest. Um, you know, nobody wants a three putt ever, but, and especially doing it when you're under pressure, it's, it's obviously not ideal. But, you know, I spoke to my caddy, Joe, and stuff, and I pretty much as soon as I got to the next tee, it was done and just focused on what I needed to do. Broadhurst prevented a homegrown success story at Clandy Boy. Now, though, these Irishmen are seriously contending in Scotland. Hello and welcome back to the PGA Euro Pro Tour. Well, there's one hot topic up for debate and it's not the golf, it seems to be the weather. We're in a valley here surrounded by stunning mountain and weather that can change at pretty much any moment, presenting its own unique challenge to the golfers. Thanks, Gabby. It remains officially summer, but there's real late season intensity here as the destination of the Spey Valley Championship trophy remains anyone's guess. The most likely players to catch Michael Stewart are Stuart Graham and Dermot McElroy, the latter targeting a repeat of the birdie he made on the 17th in the first round. And it's a good opportunity, a 527 yard par five, this penultimate hole bends slightly from right to left and it's narrow down there though. There is a danger if you don't get your tee shot away. That bunker cuts in about 70 yards from the green if you are looking to lay up. A couple of deep bunkers, short front, short right as well. This is one the players will really, really be targeting. It's an eagle chance if you get your tee shot away and McElroy is going for it in two. Clamber up. Well, I think that might have found one of those front bunkers, Phil. 
Enifer. A birdie here could well secure a place in the top ten. Not ideal, but what about McElroy back on 17? It's a popular bunker here on 17. All three players in this group has found it. Dermot McElroy's golf ball is just here. He's got a chance for birdie. He hasn't got a lot of green to work with, but because the conditions, the ground is very wet, so he's going to have a chance to get some spin and access that tight pin. Off a slight upslope as well, which I think will help, but with the moisture on the surface, could get a skiddy first bounce. I think he will be very happy how well that worked for him. I'm not sure if he was not trying to land that just a touch further with a little bit more spin, but it's released up and it's OK now. And if from this popular spot over to the right of the fairway here on 18. Missed out on promotion by literally one shot at the Tour Championships last season. Dan Brown getting up and down to save his par on 18 to take that final Challenge Tour card. Now here's another chaser, Graham. He was tied fifth at the Vale and at Clandy Boy as well. He's 24th in the road to Lockern standings at the moment. He's an incredibly consistent golfer, makes a lot of cuts, gets a lot of top 30s. Is this the opportunity for that big breakthrough though? A fine shot there. And Enifer go to the links at 11 next week on a high. It should be top 10. He's got something to be optimistic about, Kit. Yeah, birdie, birdie, finish. Always nice to carry that momentum with you. He's a player of undoubted talent. Just like this man, Stuart Grehan. This to get within one of Michael Stewart's lead. Well, that really seemed to decelerate an awful lot about halfway there. So just a par for the Irishman. And this for a share of the lead. Not a lot in this. Probably doesn't want to leave it outside the hole. And that's got to be a misread. Started it left edge and it carried on going. He's living dangerously, but so far Michael Stewart has yet to be overhauled. Nine in the par, one clear of Maddie, who's finished. Hutchinson in the clubhouse and McElroy with one hole to play. This golf course does have some absolutely amazing golf holes and they're in abundance, but this one is 229 yards. Par three, I'm feeling a breeze into my face over a lake, slightly rises up. Yes, okay, this is 229 here. That's 210, that tee box down there. Then you can go a little bit further forward. Now, they can shove the pin over on the right-hand side behind those three bunkers that you can just see lurking shy and right of this green. And they can put it over there in a horrible position. So you put a tee up a little bit more there, you can hit like probably, you know, no more than a seven iron. This is some hole, you know, three holes to go and you've got a really nail one. An absolutely brutal par three, this one. One of the toughest we face on the Euro Pro Tour all season. Not a tee you want to be stood on, needing a birdie. Oh, that sounded like it landed in sand. So work to do for Graham to save par. Now, talking about needing a birdie, that's precisely what is required for McElroy on 18. That looks a reasonable flight. Oh, but it's a common place to end up on the right and on a downhill lie as well. Left-handed Billy McKenzie having a tough year. He's missed all 11 cuts. 
But he's going well this week at five under par. A little misjudgment with the wedge into 12 there, though. Dan McElroy has found the right rough on the 18th hole. He knows what he has to do. He has to make birdie from the shot. In terms of the lie, he's going to have to be careful that the club doesn't get dragged left. He's got loads of room right of the pin. The question is, how aggressive is he going to be? He's got 120, no wind to speak of. Let's see if he can make birdie. With that pin position, I've got a feeling a few of these tee shots down the right here are on purpose. The rough, not hugely penal. And that's absolutely wonderful from Dermot McElroy. Knew exactly what he needed to do, and he's fired straight at it. Cometh the hour, cometh Dermot. What a shot. Now, Mackenzie needs to replicate the inspiration. And I use that word advisedly. He showed in the first round at Castletown Lynx last year when he shot a 60. Yeah, en route to a tied 11th, his best ever finish on the Euro Pro Tour. And he's looking for a bit of late season momentum. We can't see Stewie Grehan. You can see his club. Yeah, lovely, well done. Well shot. Very good. And that's absolutely sublime. Nice shot, Stu. Cheers. As you say, Kit, it's been a real toil, relentlessly, for Billy McKenzie. Nice to see him doing well. Oh, what a shame. Title chance gone, but on 18, most certainly alive for McElroy. Dermot knew what he had to do on 18. He's won back and he's hit it close. It's about three feet. There's not much break in it. He knows what he's got to do. This part is to tie the lead. Let's see if he can do it. Oh, McElroy. This is what you practice for on the putting green. These three footers. Yeah, well done. And he holds it no problem whatsoever. And he joins Stewart at nine under par. Nice mate. Every chance that's enough for a playoff. Can't really see anyone getting to 10, Phil. And enough for promotion. That's the other thing to think about. The challenge tour now for him is very much a reality in 2023. The smile of satisfaction. After that wonderful bunker shot here on 16, Grehan to stay two back and with a glimmer of hope. It's a really good save from the bunker. Grehan retains hope with that. It was gritty. Chris Hansen has time on his side, but already in the clubhouse, very much in waiting mode, is McElroy. He's tied at the top with Stewart. And after he signed his card, Rachel caught up with the now joint leader. Damn, at seven under today, birdie on 18. How good was it to finish with that, with that putt? Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, I was giving myself a good chance uh, after a per second shot on 17. Uh, it just turned a wee bit more than I thought, but I had a good putt and then uh, to hit it to a couple of feet in the last was great. And you knew what you had to do today. Um, you knew what the scoring was. Was it a case of sticking to the process and executing? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I played very well yesterday now. Um, I was a wee bit rusty now this morning, to be fair, the first couple of shots, but uh, yeah, I'll just stick to what, what I was doing, really, and uh, yeah, just just going through the process. You can go back to bed now. I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> and nine under, you're now leading the tournament with um, Michael Stewart. Yep. Do you think that, that number will be good enough? I don't know, it's hard to say. Uh, again, it's a lovely day out here today, so uh, I know there's a couple of guys at five or maybe six under just teeing off there, so... I'll have to wait maybe six hours and see, but uh, no, it's it's a good uh, good two round total, so I'm quite happy with that. What are the plans for the rest of the day? I don't know. I'm going to have to wait. I'm a uh, um, uh, travel buddy, <laughs> yeah. so um, he's out in the course at the minute, so uh, we'll chill out and just wait and see the scores. Really, this really is the joys of tour life now, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rain delays and then obviously wait, waiting hopefully for a playoff now. Oh, so. well done, seven under, great score, no blemishes. You must be super happy. Good luck. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. By day's end, could the 29-year-old from Ballymena emulate James Allen as the season's second double winner?
serene, sensational McDonald's Bay Valley Golf Resort, set in the dramatic landscape of the Scottish Highlands, where Euro Pro Tour golfing drama is unfolding. Dermot McElroy and Michael Stewart have finished at nine under, but could yet have more company at the top, with Stuart Grahan the prime candidate. Mind you, he needs at least a birdie on the 17th, a hole where he had to settle for par in the opening round. Yeah, he was two over par after four holes in that opening round as well. So given this has been cut short to a 36 hole sprint, even more impressive that he's got a chance. Oh, and he's bulleted that one down the fairway. Finding the fairway hugely beneficial kit as it is on 14. And it's tricky, a pretty dead straight hole, which is always tough for the eye. That bunker not really in play, but you can see there's a little bowl in the fairway. Most of the drives will find that sort of area. That leaves a wedge in from somewhere around 100 yards. No bunkers around the green, but all about the pin position. It can be tucked away here. And Mackenzie, unfortunately, has not found that fairway. We saw him miss that short put for par on 12. He bogeyed 13 also. That writer for your rungs, though. Yeah, reasonably generous pin position, quite accessible. There is a slow put past it as well, so you can use a little bit of spin if you want. Joe Brooks. Straight at it, great control. Having a very consistent season this year, Brooks. Grahan won the Pram at the K Club this year around those two wonderful courses. Shooting rounds of 67 and 66 illustrative of how good he can be. Superb poise and balance on that shot, and that is why. Well, he needed at least a birdie here and a birdie at 18. Why not pick them both up there? Eagle chance. Mackenzie. Oh, just slides by on the high side. So just apart, and he stays where he is. Also on 14, the likeable Joe Brooks. He's in the promotion picture. Yeah, nine top 12s in 12 events this season. A runner-up. Yeah. Looks like adding another top 12 this week, but he is desperate for that maiden victory. Back on 17 to put the cat amongst the proverbial pigeons. Here's Grahan for Eagle and a share of the lead. Just a touch of left to right in this one. Yeah, oh, and it just grabs enough of the left edge. That is a superb move on the penultimate hole for Stuart Grahan. Tied for the lead at nine under. Well, I said I didn't think anyone would get to double digits. He's got a great chance now. <laughs> and then there were three at the top. Are we going to see the second playoff of the Euro Pro Tour season? Or will Grahan solve 18 and win it outright? Well, here we go. 18. 418 yards, you can see it. Par four. This is the last hole. This is what it's all about. I mean, I've got good memories of this hole. Well, it was bad for some. My mate Scud, he knows who he is. Uh, we stood on this tee. He went on to miss the cut by one. It was all down to this. And he, well, the only place you can't hit it is left. And where did he go? Left. Big river runs down that left-hand side. You get here, you can see the first two bunkers on your right. Plain as day. You've got to be left of them. If you come slightly further to the right-hand side, probably won't be able to quite zoom in, but... There's a bunker you can see right in the far distance. That's just on the right edge of the green, right round the corner. Now, it's, like I say, 418. It's not a massive par four, but it's all about position. You can hit an iron off the green, take those bunkers out of play. You can fly it over it with a bit of draw, kick it off the bank and feed it down onto the fairway. But it's massive demand, it really is. And I tell you what, it brings people to tears, just like my mate Scud. Well, plenty of momentum for Grahan off the back of that eagle. He's found the fairway here on the final hole so he can get maximum spin. Yeah. 
Too much spin. I mean, that was no more than 18 inches from the hole and zipped backwards. The champion was about to be crowned and then physics took over. Stuart Easton at four under par, but a strong finish here on 17 and 18 could force his way up the leaderboard. And that's an excellent judgment of the spin, carrying it past the hole as he knew he needed to do. Here we are then, this is it. Grahan to avoid this tournament going into overtime. Oh, you've got to go. He had the line as well. Immensely frustrating. Easton to move to five under par. Back up to the home green where the man from Tullamore Golf Club, Grahan, is looking to tidy up and make it at least a three-man playoff. So one chance missed for the birdie to get to ten under par. But with that, he is in on nine under. And that might be good enough for a second chance at this title via a playoff. Well, he finished second in his first ever Euro Pro Tour event at Frilford Heath in 2018, and he's guaranteed at least that again. Let's hear from him. Stuart, yes. five under today, yep. eagle on 17. Mm -hmm. How good was it to make that eagle? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I don't know what the scores are, but I know Michael's in at nine under, so uh, it was nice to give, me a ch give myself a chance in the last. Unfortunately, he left it short, but hopefully a playoff, fingers crossed. Yeah, and how was your round out there today? You obviously had a lot of time to think yeah. about it. Yeah, no, it was good. I've been playing quite solid, like, so, um, yeah, just been kind of trending, so hopefully get a chance later on. I can confirm it's a three-way shootout for the title, as Chris Hansen could only reach seven under. The weather refused to cooperate, but Spey Valley has shone through and has been granted the climax it deserves. With the amount of volunteers that we've seen um, and uh, jumping up into the shops uh, in the week up to it and even today, uh, everyone's wanting to know the scores and who's playing, who's leading. Uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been really enjoyable. We normally see the clouds hang around the, the hills. This time they've dumped in the valley kind of all the water that we, that we could possibly receive. It's a shame we lost the Pro-Am and then obviously uh, we're down to 36 holes today, but it looks as if we might have a little playoff. So yeah, sun's out for the playoff. It's good. 125 players came. Now only three title contenders remain. The Spey Valley Championship playoff is next. The weather's been no joke at McDonald's Spey Valley Resort, but did you hear the one about the two Irishmen and a Scot? They are going into a sudden death playoff for the Spey Valley Championship title, but we don't know the punchline just yet. Maybe Michael Stewart will be all smiles on home soil. Stuart Grehan could have the last laugh, or Dermot McElroy could display impeccable timing. Kit, this is exciting. I love a playoff, it's sudden death. Alternate holes the first and the 18th until we have a winner. The first blow was struck by Michael Stewart, who acquitted himself so well in match play at the Walker Cup at Royal Aberdeen when we beat the Americans 11 years ago. That was for the silverware. The pressure told, he's been so close so often this season. Now on 18, the second playoff hole, Grihan had to get up and down to stay alive. And much like 16 in regulation, he was gritty. Par saved, back to the first. It's quite a tricky tee shot with this violent wind off the right. They're going to want to hug their tee shots as close to that right hand side, hit it as hard as possible to leave themselves with a little flick into that green. Quite a lot of space out to the right here if you want to be ultra safe, but you go too far, you can be blocked out by some trees down there for your second. Stuart straight down to pick up the tee, which tells you he loves it. 
the only other playoff on the Euro Pro Tour this year was at Cumberwell Park. Stewart was involved. He succumbed to Ryan Brooks. McElroy looking for the victory that would guarantee promotion. He looks a little bit more anxious. He's just about got away with that. A yard or two further left, and he was in big trouble. Grehan now. Yeah, the last man into the playoff. He wants to be the first to break the deadlock. And that was a very impressive swing. Well, not having to worry about those trees because he's blasted it past them. All about the lie in that thicker rough, though. Michael Stewart is in prime position again, hitting the best tee shot out of this three ball. He's got around 55 yards, slightly into the wind. He hit this to about three feet on the first extra hole. Let's see if he can do it again. Well, as we saw off the tee shot, two yards from disaster, but those can be the margins and the differences. Can he take advantage of that good break? That actually provided quite a friendly angle. Not quite so friendly as this, though. Oh, Stuart, he's let one golden opportunity slip by already. It looks like he's given himself another, and he'll get a read as well on a very similar line to McElroy. Graham coming in over the bunker. The lie looks OK. This hole, 418 yards, and they brought it to its knees. Well, anything you can do, I can do better. The approaches just kept getting closer and closer, but it's McElroy to go first. And in these situations, so often, first man in wins. This is his opportunity. Hi, yeah. Boom, rattles it in. So no doubt in the other players' minds now, they have to hold just to extend with Dermot McElroy. The pressure to hold for Stewart on the first playoff hole. And it does again, a very similar put. So Michael Stewart will be eliminated from the playoff. The last time the Euro Pro Tour was here in 2019, Daniel Young won for Scotland. But a home winner will not step forward this time. Graham to extend with McElroy. Yeah, good Excellent birdie, really good up and down over the bunker from the right hand rough. And then there were two. The title weight for Stewart, one of the tour's most reliable players all year, continues. On the fourth playoff hole, the 18th, Grehan gave himself the initiative. But would you believe the put wasn't converted? In fact, it was a similar story on the fifth extra hole, as Grian stood over a makeable put for a three and his breakthrough Euro Pro Tour triumph. Again, not to be, the friends remain inseparable as we once more turn our attention to the 18th. Kit, what a marathon, what a battle. It's incredible drama, isn't it? 420 yards this. We're seeing a lot of players head down the right-hand side, even into the right-hand rough to open up the angle into a pin that's tucked on the left-hand side, quite close to that bunker. Well, winning is not easy. And McElroy is playing from the right-hand rough. He knows how to get a trophy. Maybe that will prove the edge. Grehan yet to win at this level. And that's an absolute stunner. He's nearly holed it. He's given himself about six feet. Can Grehan answer? History repeating itself. Grehan hurt by spin again. Derma is in prime position. He's got a six feet putt. Stewart had a similar putt on one of the other playoff holes and it didn't break as much as he thought it did. Let's hope Dermot took note of that and let's see what he does. 
But it's Graham with the opportunity to putt for his birdie three first. Absolutely brilliant. When he needed it, he found the stroke. So now piles all of the pressure back onto Dermot McElroy's shoulders. He was second at Donington Grove. He was second at Abridge. He doesn't want to be second here. Absolutely brilliant. Trading punch for punch. There is no separating these two players. Well, they'll have to be separated at some point. And we're into a seventh playoff hole now, Phil. It's one of the lengthiest playoffs in the history of the Euro Pro Tour and one of the most compelling also. The quality of the golf has been off the charts. Back to the first. We know it's a great opportunity for Birdie McElroy with the honour. And that's absolutely fine there. You can hear that wind is really starting to get up and get blustery. Of course, shortened to 36 holes the tournament, but nice and bright out there now. Well, that's an absolutely superb drive from Grehan in the fairway and miles down there. Stuart's tee shot on the first hole, seventh extra playoff. I can't even remember now. He has absolutely boomed this drive. He must have some adrenaline after making that birdie. In terms of chips, he needs to carry it about five yards just from the front edge of the green and then just get it to roll out to the pin. It's a tricky chip, but he's been playing great for these seven holes. So let's see what he can do. Well, the train goes by. but who will shunt this playoff into the sidings? Well, he's not in tight, McElroy. So from the longest drive we've seen down the first all day, that is advantage, Grehan. They've both found the green again. They both have birdie chances. Stewart is closer, however. He had this putt on the fifth playoff hole. Let's hope he gives it enough break this time. You sense McElroy has to hold this. There have been so many second chances in this playoff. You can't imagine Grehan lets this one go. Well, he gave it a good run. but you have to sense after seven holes, this one could be coming to an end in Stuart Grehan's favor. This for his first ever PGA Euro Pro Tour win. He displayed down the stretch so much fortitude and then again in extra holes. Kit, that was hugely impressive. Well, he's got a great swing and he showed the temperament to go with it today for the victory. Relief and jubilation for our champion. You are the Spey Valley champion. How does it feel? Uh, it feels good, yeah. Thought we were going to be out here for another while, <laughs> but um, no, it feels great. Very happy. I don't know whether you know, but it was the seventh playoff hole. Yeah, we were just talking about Derek coming over the hill. Yeah, it was mad. Uh, yeah, it's very funny. And there was definitely some adrenaline on that tee shot on this. Mm. Uh, yeah, you nice seemed one, to yeah. hit it about 30 yards past Dermot. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a nice shot. I might have caught the down so, but uh, no, I'm delighted. Um, probably let a few chances slip there, but no, we were great. Uh, great seven holes. Yeah. And what's the plan between now and next week? Um, I think we're I think we're staying in St Andrews for the weekend. <laughs> Heard so about I might this. have a few beers tomorrow night. <laughs> Go uh, and celebrate. Yeah, I will. I will. Absolutely. Well yeah. done. Great Thank win. You. Well Thanks done. Very much. Rather than the usual 54 holes, 43 were needed to identify the winner at the McDonald's Bay Valley Resort. An Irishman on a high in the Highlands. And with only three events left this season, there have been significant moves in the order of merit. Stewart's consolation climbing from 10th into the promotion zone. McElroy solid in second, behind only Rotolocker and Paysetter, James Allen, while Grahan zooms from 24th 
all the way to ninth. Next, we remain in the home of golf for the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters at lovely Leven Links. But for now, from Spey Valley, it's goodbye.